Tom, let's do this, buddy. I'm actually, I was really excited to, uh, to talk to you for a lot of different reasons that the audience will begin to find out as they listen. So let's just dig into your background, man, because you've got, a, you've got an interesting story, really interesting story. I was fascinated when I read that. You've absolutely, you've bigged me up here. What you've done is you, you set the standard really high and the <laughs> listeners are going to be like, I'm expecting something amazing from this guy and then I'm going to disappoint them. I'm going to dis disappoint them the way that I basically disappointed every woman I've ever met. But the, uh, <laughs> it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a nightmare. Um, okay, well look, um, yeah, like my background's pretty vanilla, actually, genuinely. Like I come from uh, a small place in the UK, a small island on the UK, which basically meant that, you know, uh, the, the, the only people I really knew were old people and sheep. That was kind of my upbringing. And then um, I went away and I, I went to the city, to the big lights, and uh, I worked in the city for like 15 years. But when I was there, I had that classic, like, vanilla career where, like, you progress by being just above average. Yeah, yeah. it's really what yeah. you're doing, right? Okay, and I, I had that career, but I've always been, like, super competitive, okay? Um, and so I discovered sales, which basically, for anyone who's listening, like, in the UK, we have this weird thing where, like, I don't know if you get it in the US, but in the UK, we have this, this mad thing where, like, certain jobs carry more weight with them and more respect um for no reason so people have been like hey being an accountant is a really good career path for you i'm like accountants get paid shit money like yeah. why why do you want to be an accountant it's fucking boring you do the same <laughs> shit all the time but like salespeople, always the top paid people in 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 a business always have the most freedom and yet no one ever wants to say they're a salesperson so i used to say shit like yeah i'm a uh, business development consultant yeah i'm a uh, i'm a revenue executive yeah that kind of bollocks you didn't want to be like i've never heard of yeah, that i'm one. a sales guy yeah like just that kind of bollocks all the time so um i apologize Ian, if i keep swearing it's uh, it's a british thing um the um uh, he's cool, he's cool. Yeah. okay and um so we had i was in sales and i had a pretty good uh career and this dude come up to me one time and he was like uh, hey Tom, look, you you're you're making some noise in the space. Do you want to come and join this startup with me? And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about, mate? Like, what's I've a startup? We gig here. What the fuck is a startup? <laughs> I was such a corporate <laughs> geek, and he's like, yeah. So just so you know, you've got to give up your salary for eighteen months. You've got to chuck in a hundred G's, and that's what oh, we geez, do here. Sort of like, basically, like, basically, pretty much. And yeah. I'm like. This is the worst thing ever. But I remember the pitch that he got me with and he absolutely nailed me. And he goes, Tom, uh, just just question. Like, what, what was the name of the first employee at Apple? And I was like, well, Jobs and Wozniak, obviously. So yeah, 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 fine. What was the name of the third one? And I was like, well, I don't know. He goes, that's my point, buddy. No one remembers the employees. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> I've got to do this. I've got to do this. Um, and so I left and I joined the startup and we had mad success. I was like seven what, what founders. Was this, what we was had, the startup? The company's called Contexta. Now yeah. we had, this is, we're in the financial crime space, like the real darling of UK startups. We were smashing it. We were like, I call myself a founder, but in truth, I was a bit of a pretend founder. Yeah. If you're not, if you're not the, like, if you're not the one who's been sat in a coffee shop, writing down the ideas on a napkin, yeah, you're not really the founder. You can call yourself a founder if you want, but you're not. Yeah, and I refer to myself as a faux founder, um, but I was one of those. I was the original eight. Okay, we'll say that. So I was there, pretty much number three in the business. I was in charge of all of the commercial side, and we grew crazy fast. We had 150 employees after like two years. Damn. Yep. Wow. Was, damn. Yeah, we grew quick, and it was great, um, apart from the fact that I absolutely hated it. Um, because I was, I was head of commercial, I was selling to big banks and in truth, I was basically doing what everyone else does, right? When they, what everyone else does when, you know, that I've been doing for my whole career, I was just walking into big banks, talking about the same shit, yep. classic sales deck, usual stuff. And I was like, this is, this is mad. And I think, you know, like every, every good story, like you've got to go right down to bottom and people will have this. This is why I love this podcast. I love listening to it because people can, on the outside world, everyone's looking at you and they'll be like, you are sitting on a ton of cash here. This business is worth a lot of money. Sure. You are cleaning up. You are selling to everyone. You are, you know, we're, we're, we're constantly in big press and whatever. You must be living the dream. I'm like, mate, I hate it. 
Like there's just something about it. Something about I think there is a uh, success and happiness are not the same thing. No, 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 no. They're not the same no. thing. And people, people, and yeah, people mis- misunderstand that. And so I'm sat there and I'm like, look, I'm not enjoying it. And I realized I wasn't enjoying it. And I started acting up and being a bit of a dick, like you do subconsciously. You know, you start like, you just, you, there's something in you which makes you behave differently when you're not really into something. Yeah. Your, your fear of consequence goes the other way, right? Um, you know, I'm a naturally very offensive person, <laughs> um, but I try to keep That's what my it mom on says the about me. DL. <laughs> yeah, I bet, yeah, no. And so I try to keep on the DL when I'm not in the office, but then when you go in and you start doing these things, you're like, this ain't cool. So I hung up my gloves, completely amicable, because uh, it's like, look, you shouldn't, just, the basic rule of life is don't do things, do things that make you unhappy. Like, just don't do it. Sure. Like, you know, there are some things you have to do, of course, like, you yeah, know, but like, just don't do it. Okay, so I stepped away, and so my life has been surrounded by, like, competition. Like, sales is a competition. Yeah. I've been a competitive athlete for different sports, basically, since I was, a, you know, a sperm. You know, like, just constantly. Technically, yeah. All about that. And so Think I, about it. It, it is a competition. Yeah. I, I, we're all winners. <laughs> we're all winners, Ian, from day one, right, okay? Because we won that race. Right. What happens to them? No one remembers the other sperm. They That's gone. right. That's right. Yeah. It, literally, I was one in right. a million. <laughs> um, and then you, and then I held that, and I held a world record from birth. I was the youngest person in the lo- in the world that day. Yeah. That's true. That was it. At that minute, you were the youngest person in the world that day. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm literally, I'm, I'm, I was a record breaker right, right away, straight away. Um, and, and so I've always been surrounded by competition. Anyway, so that's, that's the important part of the yeah. story. So, um, wait, wait, did you quit? Anyway, so I'm, I quit. Okay. How, I mean, how did you, how, yeah. you, how, did, up. You, I was like, Man. how did your ego take that? I mean, or did you have just a ton of cash sitting around? No, 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 I didn't. I was look, you know, um, I'm not going to be a dick and be like, oh man, I was scrabbing yeah. around. I couldn't afford to eat. That's yeah. a lie. Like, um, I was comfortable. I had a cushion. I had the option of quitting. Okay. And I realize that's a really privileged thing to say because not everyone always has the option sure. of quitting. Um, but like, you know, I think people, I think it's always more of an option than people realize. Yeah. Like I would say to them, like, you can find another job. Yeah. Okay. It might've be the job you want, but you can find another yeah, but job. Isn't it- okay. Uh, but I had you, a you got it like your your option for quitting or your cushion. One of it is you know the one side of the coin is I've got cash, I can quit, I can sit for a little bit, think about what I want to do. The other side is I've got to compromise my integrity, all the shit that I don't want to do. I hate this, but I hate this less. Let me just quit and go to there and just I'm just gonna hopscotch until I find some joy in something. That's what people do. You know exactly right, exactly right. I would much rather you know, like just not be going out for dinner as much and doing some sure. cool shit like in my spare time for a few months than like just doing something that's making me unhappy, you know? And I, earlier on in my career, I remember, and this is something I like to talk about a lot publicly. Like there have been so many times in my career where I've stayed somewhere too fucking long. If anyone is listening to this in a salesperson, this is a myth. People, there is, people need to understand this. When you hit your target first time as a sales guy, yep, you are of 50% of your optimum value, okay? 50% when you hit target the first time. When you hit target the second time, you prove that you can repeat success. Hitting sales, your target once, shows that you are capable of doing it, but it might have been lucky. Showing you can do it repeatedly twice, that is when you are at your maximum value, okay? You're at 100% of your potential value at that point. If you do it any more years, you are adding nothing. You're adding no more value to yourself, to the market. No one has ever said to someone, I'm going to employ this guy because he's got six years of repeated success over this guy that's got two. It's bollocks. Yeah, it's not a thing. You're not getting paid more money. Your incremental increase in your salary or your bonus is too small compared to what you get if you move. So I say to every every salesperson, if you've hit target two years in a row, quit and move on or get promoted. Okay? Because there is more opportunity out there. Because at the moment, if you're a sales guy, you are a mercenary. You are there, you are paid to do a job, and there is more money elsewhere. And the truth is, in sales, the reality is that money is how we keep yeah. score. Yeah, totally, 100%. Right? <clears throat> Isn't so, that... So, some people don't admit no, that, but it, it, Of course it is. But, but that's also, 
You know, you're talking about happiness earlier. I was reading the uh, Matthew McConaughey book, Green Lights. Great book if you haven't read that. Great book. Oh, mate, what Fuck, is that book? a great book? But you know yeah. what he says in there about, yeah. um, he says it in there one little time, but he also says it on Jordan Peterson's podcast. Uh, actually with um, Joe Rogan too, is happiness is, is fleeting. Like those paychecks are what makes you happy. The next, the next, the next, when I get there, I'll be happy. When I get here, I'll be happy. When I make this, I'll be happy. When I have my first kid, yeah. when I get married. And we follow this bullshit cycle. And then all of a sudden you're like 50 years old and you're like, what the, f what the hell just happened? Uh, 50 years of my life just went by. I've got a bank yeah. account full of cash, got that big ass house. I mean, a lot of my clients are like that. A lot of my coaching clients. And not, not that they're 50, but like some of them are in their 20s. And they're realizing very early on, which is very lucky for them and very fortunate, that they're chasing happiness. And it will never happen because it's, it's, it's something that can be taken from them at any time. Whereas joy, like what you do now, we'll get into that, is found within the thing that you really like. And you'd probably do it for free. If you had the backing like, okay, I don't need to worry about my mortgage or my, you know, I can still live a cool lifestyle. You'd probably do it for free like I would with coaching. I'd still coach. I'd still be right here with you. $100 million in my bank account right now. I'd be doing this from a yacht. You'd probably be on the yacht with me. I'm a helicopter you in. Because I think you're a ball, man. You and I can probably have a blast together. But like, I respect but that. the passion was built inside of this business, inside of this podcast. I fucking hated this podcast in the beginning. It was a lot of work to get this thing from the piece of shit that it was to the top 1% in the world now. I hated it, but I found my passion and my joy and my fulfillment in it. As I worked through the dark and the mucky and the muddy, I was like, oh my God, I really like this. Like people are, are benefiting from this. I like it. Everybody's benefiting. This is great. So those measurements that you're talking about, they will never, ever, ever, ever equal. They're always going to be one step behind. Always. I completely agree with you. And I think like, yeah, the, the money benchmark, like it's a thing. That's why I think, and I realized it quite early. I was like, look, you're always, I always think that people are at their happiness. And certainly for me, I don't know about everyone, but I realized, I went through this journey of realizing that the reason I wasn't happy in the context, sir, the reason I wasn't enjoying it is because I wasn't actually being tested. Okay, right. I like pitching. I like selling. I am, I have been doing it a lot. I am good at it. And so you don't feel like you're being tested. And when you're not being tested, you're like, you know that, yeah. you know, you know, if you do a sport, right, okay, I'm quite, I quite like my martial arts. And when you're hustling with someone who is like six, like, yeah, six years beneath you or whatever, you're like, and you're just ragging on them, you're like, this is not actually very rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. Like you go in there, you want a war and then you come away from that. I always say to you when I come out of the gym and I've been absolutely fucked up and I'm like, God, that was a good session. Let's do it again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, cause that's what you want. Like I think that your fulfillment comes from getting yourself to a level that you didn't think you'd be at, taking yourself over that threshold, pushing yourself to the next level. Matthew McConaughey, a great example of that. Like, you know, he stopped doing the rom-coms that are paying him sweet quiche to go and do the stuff that challenged him as an actor. And that's when he started to find fulfillment and reward. Yeah. And that's really what happens. That's why I say to salespeople, like if you get your target more than twice in a row, it's too easy, buddy. Go somewhere else, change that challenge. That's interesting. Okay? And that's what, so, that's it. And I made the mistake. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that. Uh, I, I love that philosophy. I've never heard somebody put it like that. Most people, most people want to get that predictability, that's the sustainability, that consistency. And they go, okay, cool. I know I can do this. But what you're saying is take a fucking chance on yourself. If you repeat it twice, you can do this. Now push yourself more, higher, go for that next level. Like, proposition someone that you think is absolutely 100% going to say no to you. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. Exactly it. Like, we, I hate that term when people say people are limitless, but genuinely, I've got no they idea are. what my limits are. You don't know. I've got no fucking idea, right? So, Dude. so anyway, so I was, so let me tell you about, let me move forward and talk about what happened with stakes yeah. in my company now. So I quit, I quit contact, sir. And it was like, I don't think it was a hard decision to make. I think it was a hard thing to do, right? Because, you know, you, you, you develop a, a love for the people around you. And I had a sensational CEO. Yeah, he was an absolute king, Michael Vishal. And I loved him like a brother. But anyway, we got, we're still cool. We're cool. We're cool. Yeah. yeah, as cool as you can be. I'll something like that. But anyway, so right, I'll tell you the exact story about what happened. So I'm in the gym doing a bit of jujitsu. Now, caveat here, 
I am not good at jujitsu. <laughs> I'm a stand up guy, right? I'm not a jujitsu guy, right? Okay. I've done it a bit. I've got a good coach. You know, I've done that classic privileged white boy thing of just chucking money at the problem. Yeah, like, yeah, let's get the best coach we can. All right, okay. And uh, I'm all right. I'm not good, though. Like, you know, I weigh like, I'm like 75 kilos, which is what, I don't know, like 150, eighty pounds or something. Yeah. yeah, 150, yeah, whatever. I'm not a big guy, 5'11", right? Okay, and um, anyway, so I'm in the gym. I'm rolling around, and then this dude walks in wearing a, wearing a vest. Got his guns out, yeah, and he walks over and he's he walks over and he sees me and he goes, I recognize you, you're the winning competition. Now, if you don't get that accent, that is a pristine Russian, Russian accent, accent yeah. for those of you who don't know. There's a lot of Russians listening to this being like, Wait, wait a minute, we got another guy on the show? Is there a third voice in? This guy's unreal. <laughs> um, so he comes in, he's like, I recognize you, you're the winning competition. And I'm like, Yeah, I did win a competition. For Muay Thai, <laughs> but like, and he's like, and not only for Muay Thai, like five years ago, anyway, so he's like, but he's like, he's there, and anyway, so the guy, the guy like, the, my mates around me are like, oh, shut up, he's arrogant, this dude, don't, don't let him say it. they're talking about me, I am incredibly arrogant and vain, um, and he's like, what out about the spa sometime, and I'm like, all right, <laughs> you terrifying Russian dude, yeah. and what I didn't realize was he didn't mean Muay Thai, he meant in the Jiu Jitsu. Yep. And so I'm like, all right, fine. Anyway, so he starts taking his shoes off and getting on the mat. Okay. And I'm like, oh, this is oh, happening. Shit. Yeah. Anyway, I can't back out. And then he's like, he's like, how about the dollars for money? And I'm like, all right, bro, fine. I mean, look, all of, the worst thing going to happen is I'm going to tap. Right. Right. That's yeah. it, right? You might, so, you might get some pain. So, that, so anyway. Uh, yeah, he might get some pain or whatever, yeah. This guy, like, he's hench, but I just there's something about the way he moves which made me feel like he's not going to be that much of a problem. Anyway, I don't know if you know anything about jiu-jitsu, you've done any, but, like, the, anyways, listening will know. We're a bit, not particularly technical here, but essentially what happens is he's there. I literally just get on my bum and pull guard straight away. I'm like, I'm not wrestling with this dude. He's going to wrestle right, right. me. So I literally just get a, a pull guard. I pull him in. I wrap him up in a triangle, and um, within... Under a minute, he's like, ah, and then he taps out. He gets off me, and he's like, you're cheered, you'll lose your legs. And I'm like, bro, like, that's, that's the game right. here. Anyway, so he gets a strop, and he walks off, and I'm like, hey, hey, buddy, where's, where's my money? And he goes, I have no cash, I pay you next time. And I'm like, no, 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 you're going to pay me now, all right? Where's the money, bro? And so I get my phone. Yeah, no, yeah, so I get my phone now, and I'm like, look, there's got to be, there's got to be an app. I'm not going to give my... Bank account. I'm not going to give my right. bank details. I, I mean, I'm, yeah, I, I'll be honest, like, it's, this is probably not very good, but I'm probably racially profiling this guy, aren't I? Like, I don't know him, and I'm like, thinking this, this guy's going to steal my money, which is awful. Uh, but I just want to caveat, I probably would have been the same for anyone. Um, yeah, and so I'm going to, I don't, yeah, I think it's more gender profiling right, rather right. than, you know, if it had been a girl, I'd probably be like, yeah, take my number and my money. Um, so yeah, but I went through it, and he's like, and I go through, and he says, and I can't find anything. So I'm like, there must be an app for this. So I was like, okay, there must be an app. There must be like an app, a competition app. And there's nothing. And I tell you, Ian, it's like that. Bam. That's so cool, man. I'm like, shit, shit. That's a, I've got an idea for this. I want to be able to compete with my mates. It's literally started off as, I want to compete with my mates at jiu-jitsu for money, okay? I don't want to take my money on the mat. I just want to wait safely take their money and more, their, more rather them take my money and, um, and do it that way, okay? So I do what any good founder does, okay? And I'm not a good founder. And I literally, I go home and I'm like, I go to this, I go to a coffee shop and I'm, go, I'm like, this is, this is fucking awesome. I look at it, I look at the problem and I'm like, actually, this isn't going to work for sports. I've got to get this in and something else. I'm like, video games is where the party's at, right? You think about it, I play my mates at, I play with mates of FIFA all the time yeah. in the UK, right? And I start looking at the psychology of this, and I start thinking to myself, like, what, why? What? Like, I, I put a classic Simon Sinek. Start with a why. Of course. Yep, start with a why. And I'm like, why would someone do this? Why, does it, why is it more exciting when I'm using money? Is it more exciting? Is that just me? And I can feel myself getting really passionate because I'm so competitive and I love competition. And that thing you said earlier about, like, finding something 
that you just take enjoyment and fulfillment out of. You don't need, I don't, you don't care. you're not thinking about money. You're not thinking about, you're just thinking, fuck, I just yeah. want to do this. I just want to do it for the sake of doing it. I want to enjoy the process. You're not thinking about the end goal. You're just thinking, I just want to build this thing. So I go around to my mate's house. Well, I say my mate's house. I go to my mate's house and I invite loads of my other mates around as well, which is classic me to go to my friends and then invite more people there. Um, and then I, uh, I buy these shitty heart rate monitors of Amazon and I chuck them all on each other. Because I've got this theory. I'm like, I reckon if you play for money, it's more exciting. I reckon your heart rate goes up. So we start playing, and I'm like, we start playing, and I'm measuring the heart rates, and it's like, you know, people are like 80, 70, 80. We start playing for pizza, it's like 90. We start playing for money, and they're like 108, oh, 120. I'm like, something, yeah. there's something here, man, there's something here. But I went through, I had this, um, uh, when I started uh, the company, literally two days in, I realized I don't act, although I started a company before, I didn't actually know what I was doing. I had literally no idea. Like, you know, I sort of had some theory a little bit, but like, I realized I didn't have what it takes. And also, look, like, I'm not a gamer. Not really. Like, I play a bit of faith with my mates, but I'm not really a gamer. I don't own a console or anything. Wait, is this just, this just and so you most of the time when you, Do you have an app developer? Do you know how to develop an app? Or... Well, yeah. Well, here we go, buddy. We're about to get to that. So I'm like, I don't know anything, okay, about gaming. And so I go and mention it to someone in the startup community, and this guy's going to remain nameless because he's a dick. <laughs> um, and he's like, and I say to him, like, I've got this idea. And he's like, he's like, mate, this is not going to work for you. He's Australian. He's like, mate, it's not going to work out, mate. It's fucking bollocks. You know nothing about gaming. You don't know the industry. You've got no idea. Just give up right now. Now there's a fourth guy. Oh, now there's a fourth guy on this podcast. Mean, People are just like, wow, there's a Russian guy, a British guy, an American guy, and an Australian guy. <laughs> It's so many. Everyone's listening. They're like, this is insane. It's insane. How many people, right. how many it's seats do you great. have in that studio? Yep. Um, anyway, this guy, this guy, we're calling him Bruce. And he's like, and he's, he just says to me, he says, yeah, no, it's not going to work out. But you, know, mate, mate, you don't know anything about gaming. And I was a bit like, do you know what? Fuck you, right? Okay. I believe genuinely that coming from outside of a sector yeah, of is a superpower. Okay. Because if you go into a sector, you think that can't be done because other people haven't done it. Whereas you go in there, you've got naivety. And naivety is a genuine superpower. Okay? You're right, if you go in somewhere with that, you take away the fear of something. Yeah, it doesn't restrict you. And I'm like, yeah, I can do this better. I've got all this knowledge from fintech and the data world and sales. I've got different knowledge than people that are coming from this sector. I can bring something different to this. And so I go in, I'm like, okay, but I do need someone. I need a co-founder. And my attitude is always like, aim high. Like, you know, like the truth is like people who are incredibly successful are no different in terms of character, like personality to people who are like you and I just having a chat. You know, we could be just chewing the fat with Elon Musk, right? You can just chew the fat with him. He's just a regular dude, right? He's just very good at what he does. And so I was a bit like, okay, I need to go big. So I look through my network and I'm like, okay, I find someone, I speak to my, my friend, and she, she used to work at PR, work in PR EA Sports. And I'm like, hey, do you know anyone in the gaming space? And she said, I know the co found the co creator of Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. I'm like, Grand Theft Auto? Yeah. That's the biggest game of all time. Yeah, I'm like, what's he doing tomorrow night at six? And she's like, why? And so I'm on my phone looking at Skyscanner, I'm like, I can be in New York tomorrow night at six o'clock. <laughs> she's like, well, you're gonna come and meet? I'm like, you gotta go big, right? Yeah. If you're gonna do it, you gotta go hard. And um, as I always say, I've got 99 problems, but the pitch ain't one. And uh, so, I, uh, <laughs> so I hop on a plane, I go over to New York and I meet Gary. He's British, so he's incredibly handsome, charming and intelligent, like all British people. And uh, I meet him in Brooklyn and he takes me for what he calls coffee but i would describe it as just brown <laughs> disgusting water it was horrible anyway we go down there and we sit down and he's like i'm like i'll give him the idea and he goes yeah this um this is this isn't gonna work because of this 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 and this and he's like but you know what i'm in so that was it so it literally like he just come it's like he's like he said tom tom you've got too much energy so, what he, no. so, so wait, wait wait let's let's make sure the audience in. is following this he didn't give a shit about the idea. He believed in you. 
He literally like, big, yeah, yeah, I mean, he, um, and we're now great friends. He was like, look, he's good. He's, he's been in the game for a long time. Like he's in his fifties now. So he's been in the video game business for a long time. And he's just like, he said, Tom, look, at the end of the day, the one thing you realize when you're in the startup game is it's just people, right? But ultimately, like, it's not about your expertise. It's not about intense. It's about your ability as a founder to find people to follow your cause. Can you recruit the best people? Can you get the best funds to fund your business? That's really what matters. Like, I'm not very good at anything, okay? And I think that's something that's really important that I've realized over this journey. And let me just say, that was two and a half years ago. Um, we're now the fastest growing competition platform on the planet. We've raised over 5 million bucks. We're worth over uh, about $70 million Jeez. already. Massive Damn, two years dude. so ago. wait, so yeah. hang on, go back. Cause I want to make sure people know what this thing, this thing is called. And like, you need to... so we, yeah, so we're called, yeah. So the company, the, the get, we're called Stakester. Stake as an S-T-A-K, stake, put a stake in, raise the stakes, Stakester, as in somebody does it, Stakester. And what we do is we allow people to just play competitions with each other for money. Simple as that. It's like you say to me, you say, Hey Tom, I'm better than you at FIFA. I'm like, fuck you, Ian. I'll fuck you up, buddy. Yeah. And you're like, you're like, all right, put your money where your mouth is, bro. And so we both chuck in 10 bucks and the winner takes the pot. That's what we do. But we come on and we match you with someone of the same level, yeah. and the same skill, same amount of money. Simple as that. Okay. And yeah, we're taking over the world. Like, you know, we're, we're, in, we're, covering all of Europe, US, Canada, UK. It's going great. And we're growing super fast and it's going really well. And we raised a ton of money. Probably don't need to anymore because we started to be, you know, we're generating cash. Um, now it's going well. Um, that's just two and a half years. So April, 2019, I was being, you know, tapping out a Russian dude. Um, and now that's where we are. In fact, if I see him again, I should probably give him some shares. <laughs> I'd be like, Right. Thank you so much. Did I knew it all the time. That, right? we think about that you. guy. <laughs> like, do you believe in God or the universe or anything like that? Like divine intervention, bro. Yeah, man. I'm, that, I'm a, I'm a, that I'm a guy. Christian. Yeah, I'm, I'm like all about that. Was like an yeah. angel who walked in that day. I mean, think about it. You like, how else would you think about shit like that? I mean, that that's that that just goes to show. Like, I have a tattoo on my arm that says "Limitless Possibilities" because that's what my dad always used to say to me. Everything inside of your brain, inside of your body is limitless. you got no limitations. And the outside world is going to put limitations on you, on what you can say, on what you can do, how high you can go, how much money you can make. But it's your job to navigate through that and continue your limitless pursuit of whatever you think is possible in this world, your vision, your mission, whatever. Like, to, to it's truly, and, and it's not like some, you know, life saving, you developed an artificial heart or something like this is cool as fuck. And it comes from your limitless, like, you know what? I'm not, dude, you could have been a good guy to be like, all right, man, listen, how much did you bet? By the way, a hundred bucks, 10 bucks, a thousand bucks with the Russian guy, 10 pounds, 10 pounds, 10 pounds. because the exchange rate, that's about $7,000 right now. <laughs> but dude, think about this. You could have very easily been like, you know what? Fuck you, dude. Like, get out of you deadbeat and left it alone. But it sparked something to you. And that is so awesome. In fact, I need, I need, like, I'm going to tell your, your people, your, your one sheet, your one sheet's impressive. When they pitched me, it, it's not even near what you actually are telling us. I think your one sheet could get triple better. Like, no joke. And not that it's bad, but. I was interested in you before. You're gonna make me cry. You're gonna make now, me cry. Now, dude, you're an impressive guy. Now I'm really interested in you. I'm serious. This that's so fucking cool, man. Just the just the thought process that you thought that's possible, then sought it through, then believed in yourself enough to say, you know what? I can pitch this. And you didn't say like, well, who who am I for this Grand Theft Auto guy? Who the fuck am I? And am I really gonna take a bet on myself? Am I gonna take a chance on myself? I'm pretty sure that if you're starting a betting platform, you gotta know how to bet on yourself. And that's one of the big things that you like to talk about is like, you gotta you gotta bet on yourself. That's what that's what my dad also taught me as well, which is all chips on you. All chips every time. Don't leave a chip for the side for the waitress. Don't leave a chip for the side just in case. If you fucking think you can do it, it's all in every time, both feet go, let go, roll. And the times that I haven't done that, 
or I've left a couple chips, eh, just in case I might, eh, I don't want to bail out here. It fucking fails. It fails every time. It's so true, buddy. Like, yeah. You know that. Like, yeah. people know that. You know when you're like half assing something. Like, you know. Like, you know when you go to the gym and you're like, look, I want to get ripped. I want to get in good shape. <laughs> like, you know when you go in there and you're like, okay, so my new thing in the gym is that I give myself a calorie target, right, on my watch, right? Yeah. I go in and I'm saying, like, and I'm into fight sports, so I'm hitting pads or hitting the bag or do a circuit. I'm in the military in my spare time, and so we're big on, like, body weight exercises. You just give yourself a target. You say, look, that's it. And so I think that's what you need to do as human beings. You have to go in there and say, look, I'm going to burn this many calories in the gym. I don't give a fuck how long it takes. If I, yeah, you've just got to do it. You've got to go. You can't go in there and be like, I'm going to go to the gym for 30 minutes. Right. Because you, what are you going to do? Yeah. You, you could do like 10 reps. You could go chat. You could check your phone or whatever. If you're there, commit to what you're doing. And it's like the same again. If you are doing your, if you're starting a business, commit to it. Say something like, I'm going all in on this. Okay, don't side hustle it. Go hard at it. Commit. Yeah. That's why investors don't invest in people who are saying, like, I'm doing this as a side hustle. This isn't my main job. You've got to go all in. You've got to take that risk. If you put yourself under pressure, you will achieve so much more. Okay? I had a bit of money to give myself covered for a little bit, but it wasn't going to last for long. I'll tell you what. Raising money for this company at the beginning was fucking hard. Yeah? So I'll tell, tell you actually how we got our first, our first let, coin. Let me go back on something so, real quick. Let me, let me go back on something you said, because yeah. I know there's a lot of people that are listening to this. I mean, there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people that listen to this episode. And there's, there's the guy that's saying, yeah, but, but Tom, I don't have the money, man. I got two kids at home. I got five kids at home. I just got married. I just bought a house. Like, how do I go all in when I just cannot yeah, afford it? hundred percent. You know, like, so I know there's- I a, love, there's a I love this question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love this question. When you go all in, you go all in when you're, it's okay, so this is it, right? So- when you go to the gym, you 100% commit to the gym when you're there. But you don't go all day, every right. day. When you're in the office, 100% commit to what you're doing. It's, I accept I was in a privileged position to be able to just give up everything. Yeah. Okay. However, the first three months of what I did at that business, I could have done that in my spare time. In truth. It might have taken me longer, but I could have done that in my spare time. It costs you nothing to make a pitch deck. It costs you nothing to make a product sure. journey. It costs you nothing to design a website. It costs you nothing to come up with a brand strategy. It costs you nothing to build a marketing strategy. It costs you nothing to do competitor research. That costs you nothing. Okay? You can do all of those things. And you can really commit to those things in your spare time. And I mean go all in. So what I'm saying is if you work a nine to five, Okay, and then you got, I got kids, I've got two kids. Okay, so you work your day, you look after your kids, you're gonna have to stay up late, yeah. buddy. Don't go out for drinks with oh, your mates. Yeah, go At the weekends, if you've got this, don't go and play golf with your buddies, right? Commit. Commit to spending time building that out. And I promise you, if you commit all that time and you commit and you focus on those things outside of working hours, on your lunch breaks, don't go out for a drink with your mates and go for a coffee. Work on your yeah. idea. If you do that properly, it's not a side hustle. Your job is your side hustle. This is your gig. Yeah. Think about that in your mindset. That's what you're all in at. And I promise you, if you commit, you will come to a point very soon where you're a bit like, I'm ready for this yeah. transition. Love that. I'm ready to do it. Yeah, yeah I do. That, that's, what I was, yeah, that's what I was looking for. Because I know that there's people going, no, Tom, you're wrong. That can't happen. You're the, you had money. You know, the, 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 yeah. the naysayer. But that's fine because... Look, the, the, not every naysayer within themselves is, is harming themselves. There's some where you got to, it's like the resistance that steps you back a little bit and goes, just fucking yeah. be careful here, man. Like you're making some moves that you could fall off this ledge. But um, I love that attitude, which is your friends are not more important than this, than this thing that you want to do. Your, the coffee drinks, like your family is for sure. Your body, your health, your love for yourself, your care for yourself. That has to happen, right? So you're just realigning priorities. You got to take care of yourself. You can't burn the candle at both ends, side hustling and full-timing and, and be eating McDonald's and bullshit every day and, and, and you know, just crashing your system. That's not going to work. That's not all in. All in is a full commitment to yourself and the side hustle. And then using your gig, your full-time gig, just to fucking paddle you until your engine starts or it's a sale until your engine starts. That's really it. And, um, a hundred, a hundred percent. And also like, dude, if you don't speak to your friends for six months, right? Because you're doing something like this, if they're good friends, they're no. still going to be there. 
Okay. And, and guess what? The ones that aren't good friends right? are going to roll out, and they should have rolled out, and you should roll out on them. Bye. Good. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Cut them out. Right. It's a good way to purge. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And, that, and that's the truth of it. That's how you get good at stuff. That's how you get it. I think like I talk about, and I mentioned this to you before the show, I talk about this thing called the yep. three C's, which is a concept which I'm just so into, which is that if you want to be successful at something, and by successful, it's a difficult word. I don't really like the word success. But success for me is that you are continually improving at something. Okay? If you want to continually get better at something over time, that's what success is. Am I better at this this year than I was a year before? Yes. That's been a successful year. That's what I think yeah. success is. That mindset of continual improvement. And you know, you take people like I don't know, like Joe Rogan, right? Okay, so he is a successful podcaster because he continues to get right. better all the time. Right. That's success for me. And so I think the three C's are it's really simple. It's just like it's about consistency, commitment, and continual learning. That's all it is. You never know everything about a subject, no matter what people say. You never do. Okay, you've got to be consistent. Okay, and consistency is such a big key. You've got to just keep going on and on and on. If you say to yourself, right, I'm going to hustle on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for an hour a day, you've got to keep it up. Yeah. Got to keep up yeah. that consistency and commit to it. It takes time. A really good friend of mine, my jiu-jitsu coach, uh, Ross Nichols, he's 13 times British champion at jiu-jitsu, 13 times. And when I first started my journey in jiu-jitsu, he just said to me, Tom, right, accept this is going to take 10 years of commitment. I'm like two years in. But he's like, it's going to take 10 years of commitment to, to become okay yeah. at this. And as soon as you accept that, you're going to be all right. As soon as you accept that, it's going to take a long time to get there. So let me, moving forward, like to onto our, like, onto our funding journey, because I think it's an important one for people to understand that pain. Like, it's not just been an easy ride. So we started raising money, and we needed about half a million bucks to get this off the ground, right? Okay, it's, it's a complicated business. We've got to get a few people in. It seems like a simple concept, but simple concepts are always harder to execute because otherwise someone else would have done it before. So we need about half a million bucks. I had basically fuck all. I had a piece, I had a presentation. Yeah, yeah. That's really what I had. And, and a dream a though. So and I went dream. out to market. And a vision so and again, a dream and a passion. Yeah. I had a dream yeah. and I had a lot of belief. Yeah. Now this is funny. So like I bit of background like i've been selling for a long time okay and i was like what do i say like i was selling for a long time i i'd won global pitching competitions for my previous company and i started pitching for the investment in my business and i went 35 and nobody Damn. i got nothing yeah like it was like it was mad i was like what is wrong with me but I accepted that was the journey. I accepted that it was going to take me a long time. But there was a particular day where I'm walking along and so it was fucking brutal. So I had three people at the final stage that I was ex expecting a yes from, three. And I was going to meet my team that day. It was tight. I'd paid some salaries last month out of my savings for other people. And it was five days till payday. And... I'm walking along and I go to the gym. I go to the gym and I come out of the gym and I've got some emails and I check my emails. I had three Ooh. rejections. Okay. I had three rejections. I had zero pipe and I was like, fuck, I'm going to, I don't have the money to cover salaries. And I was walking up the road and I was planning the speech about how I was going to say to these guys, but at, the, at the time, we were just like, we were just yeah. working out of coffee shops. And so I'm walking up, walking across London from Holborn to the Oxford Circus, and I'm walking along, I'm like preparing my talk. And I call up my, my buddy, and she's super successful. And I phone her up, and I'm like, look, hey, um, this is what's happening. It's pretty brutal. She's like, hey, look, right, don't go see them right now. Say, make an excuse and come and see me, and let's just talk it out. I'm like, okay, cool. So I do that, I get a cab, I go up to see her, and I sit down, and I'm super relaxed, and I just pitch to her. And I for the first time, I changed the way that I pitched. I wasn't pitching the product anymore, I started pitching mm. the investment opportunity. Okay, and I'm doing it in that coffee shop. I started pitching about, what's the opportunity to invest there? How are they gonna make so much money? And I remember saying to her, look, whoever does this, they're gonna make, they might make like 100X on their investment. 
Anyway, I say that, and we're having a coffee, and this guy walks past, he taps me on the shoulder, and he says, hey, is it all right if I give you my card? So I'm like, yeah, all right. I was like, why? And he goes, I quite oh, like shit, to invest man. in your business. <laughs> no, no, no word of a lie. No word of a lie. My first investor, the absolute king that he is, he absolutely, he came about because he overheard me pitching in a coffee shop. Okay? And he wrote me a check. It was in the bank by payday, and we covered salaries. And that was the first check we got. And then we managed Dude, to raise half a million bucks. Let me, let me ask you a question. Like, yeah. how does that make you feel? Like, just let's get, get a little deep for a second. That, when you said that, I, I, as you were leading up, the moment you said the guy tapped me, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, my skin started tingling. Like, good. I fucking love stories like that. That's so, like, how does that make you feel when you think about just – the trajectory and the universal equation and the law of attraction or whatever you want to call it. Like, like the Russian guy and that guy, you know what I mean? Like all those 35 pitches were for something. Your friend was there for you for something. And, and it forced you into, and, and literally this is your business. Like you ever heard of a force factor or a forcing factor? Yeah. Yeah. That's, the, that's, that's your business. When you put money up, when you put something of value, really something at stake, your heart rate goes up and you're more invested. And that's your business is a force factor, forcing factor business. But I love, yeah. the, I love the universal equation piece to all this, which is like, it would have been cool as shit if you, you know, last minute, one of the investors was like, dude, I was reviewing your pitch again and I had to call you. It's 1158 and the night before salaries are due and... I got to tell you, man, I fucking love your smile. And I believe like that would be cool as shit too. But this man, that's so fucking awesome. Like, what are you, what are you feeling inside when the guy taps you on the shoulder? What are you feeling after that? Well, obviously I assumed that he wanted to have a fight with me. <laughs> obviously it's London. Right. Yeah, we don't, we don't talk to strangers here. <laughs> um, the, um, no, I think it's really interesting. So, um, a really good friend of mine, a guy called Alex Dunstan, he, um, he's an investor and a bit of a philosopher in the UK. And he says to me, he says, this thing about serendipity isn't chance because you can force it. Okay. So like everything is about serendipity, I think, within business. Like it's just like you, you happen to meet someone at the right time. Like I happen to have this Russian dude come in and challenge me. I happen to have this guy tap on my shoulder in a coffee shop. I happen to have someone who was connected to the, to the co-founder of, of, uh, of Grand Theft Auto. Right. And like, yeah, that is, those are three incredibly lucky events. But you force those events, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. So I am, no, I am a confident guy and people, yeah, and I, I'm very outspoken. And so, and I'm in a gym and I'm part of a community of people in the gym. And so it's the chance of me meeting someone who is going to hate me <laughs> is high, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I like to make friends and I like to build a network as much as I can. I like to meet people and stay in contact with them when I can. I like to help people when I can. That's the way networking works. Sure. Like you can only build a network if you're willing to help those people back. That's the tip about network. Don't just connect with someone on LinkedIn. You know, comment on their posts, help raise their profile, do whatever you can, right? That's what you do. That's how you build a network. You give them something, some value back. And then, so I had that network. I had Monica already. She was someone in my life. And then I guess in this example, like you, the fact, in, and that's example there, like I pitched to so many people. I practiced so many times. I wasn't afraid to share the story. And then someone overheard, yeah. right? Okay. So the problem that was going to happen, someone was going to hear the message. But that was particularly lucky that he happens to be in there at the same time. But the fact that I was willing to go out there and speak to that someone and do it in a public forum setting, I guess, makes a difference. Sure. And so I think that's the thing about serendipity. I think you, know, you can, it's a, exactly right, it's a force factor. You can force that to make it better. You can make something more probable by putting yourself out there and giving yourself a chance. Yeah, yeah. you know, there's, there's a lot of other factors in there, though. Like, this, it isn't chance. It isn't just fate. You did do the work. And I always tell people, the universe is going to reward you when you move the distractions and the bullshit out of the way. So when you get the things out of the way, like someone sitting in a chair, you can't sit in the chair the same way. The universe goes, no problem, I'll wait. When you get that guy out of the chair, you take that chair. Or when you get out of the chair, I'll replace it with the person you're looking for. It's like dating, business shit, money, investments. 
But the universe was saying to you, I got you, man. Like, all you had to do is just have faith and trust in yourself. Like, I got you. Now, only thing that you need to figure out is, what do I need to increase up? Skills, habits, mindset, attitude, behavior. And what do I need to eliminate? Like, literally, I run my entire coaching program is based off of more about elimination than it is about acquisition. Because most of us in society and school and all the bullshit that we go through, we have to eliminate way more than we need to acquire. You know, way more. It's the Michelangelo theory. And I say this on here all the time. Michelangelo's David. It wasn't about creating David. It was about removing the pieces of marble that weren't David. And that's exactly what you did. You removed the pieces of marble that weren't you. And then you were just there to the Russian guy, to the GTA guy, and then to the guy in the coffee shop. That was it. You were there. To the 38, 35 people that you pitched before, you weren't there. You were a form of you, but not the purest form of you. And so like that day, something walking out of that, 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 uh, that gym, you shed it, called Monica, and the universe went, he's ready. Let's deliver. That was so, it's so, that's so fucking cool, man. It gives me chills every time I hear stories like that. I love that. Absolutely love that. Thanks, man. I love that. It's a good analogy about yeah. Michelangelo. It's, it's very poignant. It's a good job, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Nice. <laughs> Dude, you know, I found uh, real quick before we continue, I found the um, that happiness quote from Matthew McConaughey. I actually wrote it down on my phone. It's uh, it's happiness is an emotional response to an outcome. If I win, I'll be happy. If I don't, I won't. It's an if then cause and effect quid pro quo standard that we cannot sustain. It's unsustainable because every time we attain it, we raise it. Happiness demands a certain outcome. It's re- result reliant. Joy, on the other hand, is not a choice. It's not a response to a result. It's a constant. Happiness comes from doing. Joy comes from being. Love that. What a man. What a guy. Guy's, guy's pretty fucking I mean, profound. Yeah, really profound. I mean, the, 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 the guy's a sensation. I think he's super, he's super inspiring. I think yeah, people need to give him more credit. Yeah. Although I think he's becoming a politician now. He's trying to yeah. run for, like, governor of Texas, isn't he, or something? Yeah. I mean, it, I don't think it could hurt. Yeah. It may hurt yeah, him because yeah, he's awesome, but like, like I don't know, I don't I, nothing about American that, politics. Let's not talk about that. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Dude, just just imagine American American politics is like this. It's a it's a it's a messy shit after a whiskey night, and you go to the pub at five a.m. and eat the worst shit. That's that, and then the shit you take after. That's my that's my vision of of American politics. Okay, good. It's just good, good, messy. good summary. Good summary. I'll take that. <laughs> good visual, right? Very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Oh, dude. So um, uh, what I'm hoping is that the universe says green light now. And you're like, mate, I know Matthew McConaughey. Do you want him on your show? And I'm like, holy well, fuck. Well, I, I don't know him. But um, yeah, like, um, I'd love to. <laughs> so like a, he's, right. He's, yeah. he's, 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 so now let's put our minds on that. Exactly. Yeah. He's, let's put our minds on that. We can do. Um, so, dude, this, is, this has been an intense conversation. We've got a couple more things I want to go over with you. Yeah. Like, where are the, what is the lesson here? Because there are going to be doubters. There's going to be naysayers that are listening to this that still want to believe. They want to believe that this thing's possible, that you and I aren't anomalies, that you and I weren't born with silver spoons or some kind of advantage that was blessed upon us, that we really came through some shit to become who we are. And subsequently, the businesses that we have or the success we have came from us becoming the people that we are. And I solidly believe that. So to the guy that's like, I don't know about this. This guy's fucking lucky. I don't know about you, Ian. You're fucking lucky. Okay. If you don't believe in the proof, that's fine. What are some steps that people can take to just sure. get in action right now? Sure, yeah. So look, all right, first of all, as a time point, I suck at everything when I first start doing it. <laughs> like literally everything. Like I, I can't think of one thing that I've ever done in my life where I was like, damn, I'm good at this. Apart from, truthfully singing boy band songs, I'm unreal. You give me any Backstreet Boys song and I am absolutely off the scale. Um, I, knew I, I knew I liked you for a reason. Yeah, but unreal, literally. Like, if, it, if, if only I got scouted when I was younger, I had a very different career. Um, but, the, um, but no, I'm, I'm not that, you're not actually good at anything. I'm awful. And I think that is actually been really a blessing for me because I have to work so fucking hard to get good at stuff. And I say to people all the time, like, if you are naturally good at something, that's not a blessing. That's a pain in the ass. So I don't have any expectations of myself, but I'm hugely competitive. And so I aspire. So what, so the point is that whatever level I get to, I'm a winner because yeah, nature hasn't been yeah. the one that's given me all these gifts, right? I haven't got, I just work hard. And I think right. that, 
And so I think it, people need to realize that, like, that's it. Like you just, the secret to everything is just working hard. Just work your nuts off. Yeah. yeah. No, and you yeah. are always in control of that. I'm not in control of the fact that I've got awful genes and my hairline starts three quarters of the way back on my head. You know, I'm not in control of that. Yeah. So I have to, I have to make it up for what hair I don't have with just masses of charm. That's right. And, and you got it, man. You freaking got it. That's a really cool concept because not a lot of people talk about that. I think a lot of people will say, well, I, I'm not going to put that into the universe. I'm not going to attract that in. I'm not going to be negative. But the fact of the matter is, if you go back and listen to my first podcast episode, I was fucking horrible. I sucked. I was stuttering. I was sweating. My seat was wet and not in a good way. I was fucking terrible. Wait, wait, wait. wait. And is then, this your first podcast? Yeah. It's a sick bad. It's a good bad. You opened me up. You opened me up for the burn. <laughs> you said to me. I saw you. Know, I just took it, Ian. I just took it. I'm sorry. Look, I'm. I'm, I'm no, no, I listen. I let you have it. I let you have it. No, I'm talking like three years ago. On the Real Estate Rockstars podcast, when, when Pat Hyben, my, my great friend and mentor, said to me, hey, why don't you just take this thing over? And I'm like, well, what do I do? And he's like, you'll figure it out. You're a smart guy. Now, I was smart and intelligent and great at selling real estate, but I wasn't great at being curious. And that's the talent that I needed to form. People yeah. think you need to get this talent to talk, but I needed to form a higher level of curiosity for other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that, man. I, I, I respect that as well. It's a graft. Like, no, no one's good on day one. And also, if you are good on day one, poor you, mate, because everyone's got a lot of expectation on that. So, yeah, it's only going downhill. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, right. I, I respect that. I respect that. Yeah. I watched this YouTuber who he's like seven feet tall and he's like diary of a seven foot guy. And he goes, let's go to Walmart. Let's see how many people ask me if I play basketball. Yeah. And it's like a hundred people. Literally look up and go, you play basketball? And he's like, I, I don't play basketball. But like, you're, you're right. Those expectations are already set for you. If you're 6'4 and 330 pounds, like you're probably being a linebacker. You're probably going to be a, yeah. you know, play football, whatever. Well, you get, and you get that. Not you, you, get the same, yeah. you get the same thing in the business world, right? So like if you are, if you went to a tier one university, you come from a great background and you got super smart grades at school, right? Everyone's like, you're gonna be a home run, you're gonna be a huge founder, you're gonna earn squillions of pounds. And you're like, fuck, right. that's a lot of pressure, man. It's a lot of pressure. If you don't have those things, every time you hit a master, everyone's like, fuck yeah, on a man, you nailed it. Good <laughs> on you. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know you get that's what it is. Yeah, so yeah, hard work. I'd rather, I'd rather be where you and I came from, whereas like people expected like, oh, you have, you know, it's like the, what parents say, you can be anything, you can do anything, you're anything's possible. Okay. Until the world start pressing down on you and they're like, well, not everything. Oh, maybe not those things either. Hey, why don't you stay right here? Why don't you just stay right in this line? That's really good for you. You're going to be in a trade school. You're going to probably push carts. Like that's my schooling. I imagine your schooling too. And you're a little more wild than I am. Like my teachers had me marked off for, for, for sweeping, for sweeping floors, man. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but they, they really like, they didn't, they didn't have me doing anything of greatness and they programmed me with that. And unfortunately they won a couple times, but grateful. And fortunately I won overall. Yeah, and it can happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's you got to cut those yeah. people out as well. There's that thing, isn't there, where you know, if your friends are saying to you all the time, like, "Mate, you're a joker. You're not going to achieve anything. Like, you're never going to do this. You're never going right. to do that." And you're like, "There's two ways that goes, right? One, you use it to drive you and give you fuel. Yep. I love my mates saying for me to things like, "Yeah, you'd be rubbish at that, Tom." And I'm like, "I'm going to fucking kill you." I'm going to do so well. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He drives me, gets me going so much. Um, yeah, my mates know to never say that they think I've been bad at something. They know that. Um, and, um, but, or you can use it to define you. You can be like, if True. everyone's telling me, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a failure and that's it. I had this, um, <laughs> it's a funny story. I got, I got fired from a job because I went into the office early and I super glued everyone's mouse and keyboard to the desk. <laughs> okay. I love that, man. 
I love that. And what I got in, I did it. I went out and drove around to get a coffee. Other people came in and then I came into work five minutes late that day. Alibi. And um, I was like, this is the best crime ever. And um, yeah. I, I go in. Uh, this is a true story. I go in there and I, um, I get in and they're like, oh my God. Who's done this? This is so annoying. This is such a problem. Oh God, we've ruined all these mice. And yeah, again, the negative is it's probably quite expensive prank, but it killed yeah. me. I was yeah. dying. I was dying. I thought it was hilarious. And they instantly thought it was me. I was like, I've got an alibi. I came in late. And then annoyingly, this nerd in the uh, facility team was like, yeah, but Tom checked in with his card at like 7.30 <gasps> that morning. I was like, fuck, busted. <laughs> God, I got totally busted. And I got fired, quite rightly so. And um, as I was getting fired, this guy, Georges, French guy, he says to me, he goes, you will never, ever achieve anything because you have the worst mindset. Everything is a joke to you. Yeah. Huh. And um, I went to get, I went for an interview for another job because obviously I needed a job to get paid and exist. And um, they said to me, why are you leaving your other job? And I was like, because I super glued some mice and keyboard to the desk. <laughs> I just told them straight up. I was like, this is what happened. And the guy across the table was just like, well, damn. First of all, hilarious. Second of all, I can't believe you told us. <laughs> like, I don't know, like, what do I, what do I say? And I said to him, I said, well, you're in a difficult predicament now, because if you don't give me this job, I'm going to assume it's because you're dwelling on my past hysterically funny experiences and you're going to perpetuate right. what my previous manager said to me. And the guy just laughed and yeah, they got me a job and actually I ended up getting like a 50% pay rise. Um, so it was, uh, and it worked out really well. And that was one of the best jobs I have before I started my own company. But I think like, there's that thing, you're in that scenario be like, that guy's told me that. And if someone else, you could take that and be like, yeah, maybe I am a loser. Maybe I am an idiot. And, uh, but I was a bit like, I thought about it at the time, I was like, yeah, it was a stupid thing to do, but you're only doing that because you're bored and you know you can achieve more and you yeah. don't really care about the job and you're not worried about the consequences. Yeah. And I think actually those kind of things sometimes where you act up are actually a really positive message. I think when you start acting yeah. up a job, I think it's a good sign for you personally. And I think you should be like, well, I'm acting up because I don't want to be here. I don't value this. I know I'm, I know I can do more. I know I'm better than what I'm doing right now. I'm not better than this job or this company. I just know that I can achieve more. And that's why I don't care about losing it and why I'm acting up. So it's a catalyst for that mindset to go and do more. That's my view anyway. No, I think you're a hundred percent right. At least in my crazy brain too, is that the same thing happened in my, in my business before my real estate business. I got so bored, man. I was doing anything I could to self-sabotage. Because I knew the part, there was a part of me that said, you need to press this coaching business up. You are making real changes in the world that are positive. In real estate, you're only, you're only selling people $300,000 houses. It's not making any fucking difference. Because you and the 40 people in this room can do the same shit. And, and who are we really negotiating with at that point? It's really the, the, the other agent. And, the, and, and, and it's like, we're just a go-between. Agents think they're like these big, bad negotiators. You're not. You're just negotiating on what the person told you they want. And you're either going to get it or you're not. That's it. It's not your deal. It's their deal. You're just their, their like proxy. And so I thought, okay, there's something I need to do. Terrified, dude. Terrified. Absolutely terrified. And then I started acting up. I started like annoying the shit out of people. I started, I started like getting mouthy at the office, pissing people off, calling people like out on their shit. And the uh, manager, my team leader was like, dude, you know, we don't have to keep you around just because you're a top producer doesn't mean we have to keep you around. I was like, well, fuck you, let me go. Like, yeah. I don't need you. I can go to any real estate company and be successful. But what I was doing, it was death by cop. You ever heard of that term? Where a, a, a guy will want to commit suicide, but he can't. So he'll go and rob a bank, take hostages, and then aim a gun at the police knowing they will fire at him and kill him. Yeah, it's, sure. it's death by cop, right? So I wasn't, I didn't have the balls back then to say, you know what, I'm going to believe in myself and I'm going to fucking go for it. I pushed and pushed and pushed until they asked me to leave. And then I was like, okay, now you better step your game up. 
Why? And then I'm like, oh, fuck, my, why did I do that? It was so stupid. Why am I such an idiot? And my wife's like, you did it because you did it. Now shut the fuck up and go find another brokerage. Now learn from your mistakes. Like my wife's always my little, my little barometer. <laughs> and she's not that mean. But when she does say stuff like that, I fucking, I listen. I really listen. So I, I love that theory. It's very simple, but it's also very complicated. There are people that need to push themselves or get pushed out of a situation to actually make yeah. that their challenge because they're afraid like you and I were. I mean, look at you and I today, successful business owners, you know, like we could have been in a, in a situation where we stayed in those positions because we were just terrified and we just kind of went by the rules and followed in line. We don't want to make any waves because if we lose this job, we're not going to be able to make rent. If we don't make rent, like we're going to be a loser and go back to mom. And people think about that shit all day long, but they will not make those choices because they're like, oh, what about my record? What if somebody finds out that I super glued a bunch of mice to the fucking desk and think I'm a loose cannon? And they'll process, but you and I have something missing. And I think most entrepreneurs do. We have something missing in our brains that gives us like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And then you do it and you're like, wow, that was dumb as hell. I agree with you. Yeah. And I think there's the, people gonna have, you gotta, I think, yeah, my, my learning from that and that I think yeah, I'd love to kick it other people is when you start doing those things, have the courage to quit. You know, like, because yeah. I let yeah. that business down, you know, uh, I let them down. They had to go through that emotional torment of having this idiot cause this trouble <laughs> and upset the business, right? They had to go through that and I did, and it's not a good thing that I did that to them, right? You don't want to do that. So that, let's help them both out and let's just pull the plug and let's just say to them, look guys, you know, I should have been like, look, actually, right. look, do you know what? I'm not engaged here. And when people like, as a business owner, when people quit, like, I'm like, good, thank God, you saved me firing you. Yeah, do you know I mean? Like, it's, I, if you, and also, when people want to quit, it's like, if you don't want to be here, like, you're not going to give me what I need. You're not going to give me the output and that I want. So, yeah, I respect that. I respect that. Now, look, Ian, I'm All right, last thing. Time. Sorry, I was going to say, I'm conscious of your time because I'm, I've been on this podcast for seven hours now. Yeah, after, because yeah, I know. They don't realize, what people don't realize who aren't listening to this is there, this is actually a three month long podcast. Because halfway through the last one, we ran out of time. And then I've come back. It's like a time machine. Since then, there's been like, I mean, since then, we've come out of the pandemic and the Olympics have started. There's a lot been going on in between. Um, I've got a question right. for you. I've got a question for you. Good. I've got a question for you. Because, like, you know, you're the super mega coach guy. And um, I always think, like, you know, whenever you speak to these people, I'm always interested to say, like, when you when you meet with someone and you're giving them some advice or whatever yeah and you say like go away and do some reading yeah because they might be a reader okay what are the books that you always recommend to people or what were the books that changed your life yeah great question um three that come to mind and are, there's like 10 but the first three are um radical wholeness by philip shepherd what's it called the surrender experiment radical oh. wholeness yeah, the surrender experiment is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The surrender, the, the radical wholeness uh, is, is a book by Philip Shepard. And it is. So here's the thing, man. I, I'm, I'm the guy that says it's not an addition. It's a subtraction. It's an elimination challenge that we have as as a new client comes on. I'll say to them, I'm not going to give you a ton of stuff. Your morning routine is get up and drink water and and then do something to fuel your brain. That's it. You're not, I'm not gonna make you jump in cold water, do all the bullshit that all these guys, but what I want you to do is I want you to eliminate way more than you take on. Because I think where coaching fails is when they keep giving people more and more and more and more shit to do, but you're not clearing out the traumas and the bullshit and the habits and the mindsets and the behaviors that don't serve them anymore in today's world. So I think the surrender experiment, I think the untethered soul by Michael Singer as well, Radical Wholeness, Letting Go by Eckhart Tolle, um, Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey, phenomenal books. Phenomenal books. Okay. Matthew Good McConaughey up. is going to be on this podcast. Is he? Okay, well, look, we, all, we all know when he comes on this podcast, he's going to be like, in his really good southern draw, he's going to be like, he, I know. who was that guy? Who is that British guy? <laughs> the really handsome one with all the charm. He inspired me. So you give him my number, okay? Me and Matt can hang out. 
Yeah. Matt, Matt talks about having big triceps. You can tell him to me, mate. He's got nothing. Yeah. He's got nothing. Okay? He's got nothing. No. I'll, I'll out try that guy seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put this out there right now. You and I are going to host an event in England, across the pond, next year. I'm going to bring my front runner event over to your neck of the woods, and we're going to assemble all of your friends, your mates, your colleagues, your coworkers, anybody that's looking for whatever. I'm doing that with you, man. You're a you're a you're a guy that I want to stay in touch with. Ian, I commit to this. We'll do it. Um, the yep. only problem you're going to have is that people are going to be they're going to look, this guy is impressive. Yeah. And you're going to be like, shit. <laughs> you? Yeah, me. They're going to constantly be like, this guy is stealing yeah. the show. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what. Stealing I mean, the I show. I mean, I mean, I'm in. I'm in. I'll prepare. I mean, if you bring over your American audience, I'll prepare some American gags. Um, so it's very, it's very no, I want, I, want a, I want a European audience. I want a British audience. Oh, well, I'm bringing them, mate. I'm bringing them. Yeah. That'd be great. That's what I mean. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll email you off one. Yeah. yeah mate, it's going to be good. All right, last thing. To be revealed that you and I are massive, massive boy band fans. Oh my god, mate! Not even like it doesn't even cut it. Like I literally play anything, anything from the sort of ninety-seven to two thousand and five catalog yeah. of boy yeah. band ballad, and I will just sing that all day long. You're like I can't even imagine. It's just, it's constantly, you know, it's like genuine. Like I don't care who you are or where you're from. Yeah, I don't, as long as you love me, that's it. It's just, I just don't, that's so true, man. I'm saying yeah. that right now. I'm telling you, I want it this way. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> At the end of this, every time I sign off the end of a podcast, I just say, bye, bye, bye. It's all the time. When you say you want to come over, when you say you want to come over here, they, explain, they say, this I promise you. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. Um, I feel like we're really, you know, we're really like, we're really in sync here. Right no, now. We are really in sync. We are, we are, we are, we are, you know, dude, I'm t I told you my email. I, I revealed yeah. that to my wife when we were dating our first Valentine's day. We, I made a, a playlist on my iPod. It was like 11 years ago of all Backstreet Boys in sync, uh, 98 degrees. And we got wasted on homemade wine and danced our faces off all night, all night. Uh, just a boy band. Oh, She's like, Wow, are you sure you like women? And I was like, Yeah, I love women. Let's get. I like boy bands. So shut the fuck up. And let's dance. <laughs> it's great music. I love that. People are like I was. I was. Um, I tell you something funny. Actually, funny story. So I'm in. Um, yeah. I'm in the gym and I'm hitting back, and um, obviously making an absolute racket as I shake the building, um, and then um, I with my 155 pounds, and then I um, anyway, I'm knocking this building down. And um, I'm in the middle of the time, and this guy comes over to me and he starts chewing the fat, and he's like, what are you listening to, bro? And I was like, do you, do you wanna know? You wanna know my secret for like, oh, no. boom. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, yeah, like, what is it? And I was like, 90s pop. <laughs> he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, legit, mate. I don't need, I don't, I, don't, I don't need some aggressive music to start throwing stuff out there, mate. I'm just having a good time here. Yeah, no, legit, yeah. I love it so much. It's so funny. When the, when the, the, when the, when the call starts. Second. You know, the, you know the song, The Call? Yeah, of course I do, yeah. Yeah, of course. When that's like, hey, honey, I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm pumped. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Keep running around. <laughs> I'm in. Let's go. It's so when I hear that, I'm like, the acting from AJ in that, mo in that bit is oh, absolutely God. ridiculous. And it's so ludicrous. Oh. And it's like, it's just like, and also, if he's like, he's on the phone, if you phoned up your girlfriend, you're like, oh yeah, I'm really sorry, I've got to go. I don't know when I'll be back. The, the panic that they would set in. And she's just I like, know. oh, it's fine. She's like, oh, it's fine, don't worry about it. Yeah, you must do this all the time. I'd be like, if someone did that to me, though, that dramatic, I'd be like, someone's being murdered. I'm going to call the police. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, honey. Mm. Hey, honey. Uh, I'm not, I don't know when I'm going to be back. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, I just love this. I love to get into the story because it's so out there. It's, it's like it's like the opening of a scene from Twenty Four. It's like Jack Bauer who's based his whole um, his right. whole career on listening to that song. 
This is, know, this this is, is the indulgent podcasting. Whoever's listening to this right now is yeah. like, what are these guys doing? I'm not even drinking. No. I'm all just diet coke here. No. Yeah, that's what I've got here. The old DC. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's twelve thirty Eastern on a Friday right now. Like, can you imagine what would happen if you and I were kicking back at nine thirty, ten thirty at night and we open up the mics? Okay. Be dangerous. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be gonna a problem. We're gonna, we're gonna do, we've got to, just by my office, we've got a little karaoke bar. We'll go in there. I'll oh, invite everyone. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm making a commitment right now that I'm on stage with you and we're gonna we're gonna there, there, we're just you and I are kindred spirits, man. But we got we got to cut this three hour podcast. People, yeah, nobody's sorry, listening we're, anymore. We're we're gonna, gonna, we're gonna, yeah, we're, yeah, we got to cut Bro, this out. This, this, has, been, Thank this you so has been the most fun podcast I've ever done. Thanks, man. Likewise, it's been a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So, all, all right, right. Tom Ferry, appreciate you, man. And dude, seriously, I'm emailing you right after this. We are going to put something together. We're going to bring our front runner, our front runner experience, our front runner retreats to your side of the pond. Mate, I would absolutely love that. That'd be sensational. All right.